Right, well, for the third time in a row, my uh, neutral switch is leaking on the T160. Now, I am 90% sure that it's leaking through the switch, <coughs> not down the thread. But I can't be sure, but, you know, I've, I've left it there and I've wiped all the oil off and anything off from there. And the oil always appears at the end and the body of the switch is dry. So I'm fairly sure it's leaking through the switch itself. But, you know, I, I wouldn't say that for definite. But whatever the case, I thought, stuff this. That's the third one in a row. Right, I'm going to fit one of these uh, inductive proximity sensors from uh, Triples Unlimited. Because apparently they don't leak. We'll see. So it's going to be bye-bye these. And then I've sent away. And this is what I've got. Uh, so I'm just about to sit down and read through the instructions like a good boy before I start work make sure I understand everything and uh, take it from there of course the, the, the first daunting thing I see is this we strongly recommend that this job is even well is, is mm, that's not good is carried out by an expert hmm oh dear <laughs> I don't think I qualify but never mind uh, right, I'm going to sit down, read through the uh, destructions, and uh, then start work. I've drained the oil out of the T160 gearbox, uh, and uh, oh, I seem to be in the middle of uh, refurbishing the bathroom at the same time. This is a total pain in the backside because it turns the damp, immediately turns the, the garage into a building site. Right, so first thing. Uh, I'm going to do is to screw this into the gearbox which is basically a replacement for the original big advantage is that it's actually a proper got a proper nut on uh, as opposed to the original with only two flats which is nigh on impossible to remove and I was very lucky that I actually just managed to get my old one out one of the things that the slightly annoying thing about the kit it's got everything in it and it's got a special adapter special that allows you to screw this new one into the gearbox, which is fantastic. But of course, what it doesn't give you is anything. I don't know of a special tool to get this one out. And I was really lucky that I just managed to get a spanner on it because it's recessed up inside the gearbox housing. And anyway, um, so I would have liked the kit to have had something to actually, it's nice to have that to screw a new one in. Brilliant. But you've got to get the old one out first. And when the when the engines in situ is a flipping nightmare. Right. Anyway, I'm going to screw this in, uh, and this like uh, like the original. It's a housing for the switch, and and this is well switch is a sensor as opposed to a switch. The new one, and uh, that will go down. You know, when that's in, that will go up in there, and that'll be the sensor. In order to stop leaks, there is actually I don't know if it'll pick it up here. Uh, but there is like a, an oil seal, like it's a fawn leather coloured oil seal uh, actually in in there, which uh, and that's what stops it leaking. Uh, but this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as normal, put thread lock on this thread. I've cleaned up all the threads in the gearbox. I'll screw this in uh, to try and make sure it doesn't leak oil past the threads. Using this, uh, and then I can put a 10 mil spanner you can't get a suck on it because the frame and the exhaust are in the way. But I can get a 10 mil spanner on that to then tighten uh, the actual uh, adapter up. Okay. Right, I'm just finishing uh, screwing the adapter in. Whoops. Just finishing screwing the adapter in now. Uh, using the using the 10 mil spanner on the special little extension uh, get that as tight as I can really I really don't want this bloody thing to leak uh, yeah, yeah that's pretty good and tight now take the actual uh, that's just, this is just like a qualified spanner and there that's the uh, adapters now in place ready for the actual sensor itself to slide up inside. All I'm going to do now is grease the tip of the sensor slightly because uh, I don't want it to damage that little oil seal inside the adapter 
as normal when it slides up obviously the last thing you want to do is damage your oil so okay so uh i got this uh sensor and that and then should just go up inside here hopefully missing the frame good it does and then screw it up there's a, a lock nut on the end and anyway, you should screw it up until it just uh hits the uh hits the neutral uh lug so i'm going to do that and then i'm going to back it off one i'm just going to go off camera while i do that right so uh that's in in place now so what i did i slid the sensor in and then screwed it in until it stopped uh the only thing to note there was that after the sensor went through the oil seal it was necessarily quite stiff so obviously the oil seal is, is tight which is good and so uh, the only way I could turn it I had to gently put some pliers on the sensor which I was a bit worried about that was the only way I could actually turn it to get it up and so it uh, touched the, the, the neutral indicator anyway I've done that and then I've turned it they, it says to, to then unscrew it between one and one and a half turns so I've unscrewed it one and a quarter turns and then done this uh, this lock nut up uh, and so the sensor should now be in place. So then the next uh, thing, uh, the next operation is a biggie because apparently I've now got to uh, put, the, put the actual uh, pin connector on the end here. But apparently on some T60s there's not enough room between that pin and the frame rail uh, and then and if that's the case then you have to mess about to get it to fit I can <laughs> I won't mind betting any money at all that mine won't fit but we'll see touch wood you never know and pigs might fly right so this is the little um, socket that I've now got to try and get on the end of the sensor uh, but if there's not enough room, then I've got to uh, mess about with the sensor, screw it in a bit, put the socket on, then screw it back out again uh, to get this to fit. But uh, so, yeah, but you never know. And obviously, it's um, got to make sure it does locate. There's three little pinholes in this, and three little pins on the sensor. Needless to say, they need to line up uh, and uh, not to bend the pins in the sensor. Well, blimey, wonders will never cease. I did actually manage to get the uh, uh, to get the plug on the end of the sensor without having to mess about. It was absolutely no room whatsoever. I just managed to squeeze it between the two, just, and then it went into place. And then you tighten it with this knurled nut here, uh, and that tightens it up onto the sensor itself. So the uh, wire in there, the uh, well. The sensor's in place, the plug's in place. Now, phase two, which is to take all the flipping wiring and connect it up to the uh, uh, to the wiring on the bike. Mm. Not sure I'm looking forward to that, but now we'll see how we go. Uh, so much wire that I could probably uh, attach it to the bike behind. It says there's enough wire to attach it wherever you want on the bike, and they're not joking. I could probably put this around the bike twice and still be able to connect it. So it's not going to be short on wire. Right, here we go. It's all wired up now. This is the relay uh, because the actual sensor isn't uh, doesn't generate enough current to uh, fire the neutral warning light. So there's a relay that then boosts the power from the sensor to light the warning light and. And that's it, it's eventually wired up. I say eventually because I have to say that is the worst set of wiring instructions I think I've ever read. That was just basically completely inaccurate. Uh, I've had a word with him and uh, I think he's going to change instructions. Somewhere here in the video, I'm just, I'm just trying to tidy things up a bit. I've just left the relay sitting there and the remains of the toolbox on my bike. Because someone cut the toolbox off. This is going to stay there for now at least. Um, 
So somewhere about now I shall put in some stills of the wiring. Okay, this is the wiring diagram from the T160 workshop manual. Now, if you look uh, at number 27 in the diagram, that is the neutral warning light. And if you look, you'll see there's a white wire going into the neutral warning light. Then there's a green wire which comes down from that to the actual neutral switch. And then on the other side of the switch is a red wire to earth. And that's it. White wire into the bulb, number 27, and green wire out to the switch and red to earth. Okay, pretty straightforward, huh? But here is the wiring diagram that came showing how to wire this new sensor up. Now, if you look at the left-hand side of the diagram, that's supposed to show the wiring for the neutral lamp and neutral switch. You can see neutral lamp there. Then there's a white wire, which then suddenly, according to the diagram, turns to red and green. And then the other wire coming out of the neutral lamp is green and brown. Uh, so there's no green, there's no red, and there's a white wire that suddenly turns red and green uh, that seems to come out, uh, it doesn't make sense at all. And so I tried wiring it up and completely did my head in. So this is how I amended the diagram, and I think this is what it should look like. There should be a green wire from the neutral lamp, not green and brown. And then forget the white wire and everything, there's nothing to do with it. And when just get rid of that, then number 30 on the relay is simply to earth. Right? It's de dead simple. But, you know, if you look at the original diagram, completely confusing. Okay? Green to one connector and red to the other. Done. And here are the original instructions. Again, referring to, was it green and brown and, and red and green, uh, which didn't uh, make sense at all. Uh, it's green and red, which is basically to wire its worth. Don't connect some wire, other second wire from the, from the, uh, the neutral lamp. Also note in the instruction, it says connect one end of the extension cable. There is no extension cable. You have to make your own up. So you have to run, uh, extend the green that was going to go to the uh, switch under the engine uh, up to wherever you've got the relay. And then you can con uh, and make, connect it to earth anywhere on the, on the, on, with a red wire. But you've got to run a green cable uh, up from what was the uh, switch connector up to wherever the relay is. But talk about trying to make things confusing. I, I must have sent 10 emails and, and I wasn't happy. But anyway, it's done now. Okay. Various emails and so off, backwards and forwards, got it all working. Having said that, I uh, I first put it on and uh, it wouldn't work, even though the wiring was finally correct. Uh, and so he said to screw the sensor in a bit further and sure enough, that's what worked. The, the sensor was too far away from the neutral uh, sort of spigot to make contact. But now... There, I have a lovely neutral light, and here's a little, little bonus, a little extra for us all. Oh, look at that. The, uh, the sensor lights up as well. See that all, uh, uh, so a little, a little thing, just these little things uh, please small minds. So the, uh, that uh, yellow sort of strip all lights up on the sensor. <laughs> just... <laughs> Now you know. Okay, uh, so I haven't been out on the bike since, but obviously the neutral indicator is working fine, and it does indeed go out when I change gear. Uh, but the main thing for me is, uh, does it leak oil? That's the, the whole point of putting it on, because the other one was leaking oil. Allegedly, it should also make the gear change slightly easier, because there's no contact at all now with the uh, cam plate. The sensor, it... It is near to the cam plate, but doesn't actually touch it. So uh, it's supposed to make gear change smoother, but the gear change is pretty damn smooth on the T160 anyway. My concern is to stop the damn thing leaking oil. So uh, we'll find out about that in uh, in a week or so. But anyway, all done. 
and pleased. Certainly, I'm infuriated by the wiring to begin with, but all done now. And all I've got to do is hope now that it doesn't indeed leave forward, which is the whole point of doing it in the first place. Time will tell.